section 1-1, uh, solving nonlinear inequalities. Um, so we're going to solve nonlinear inequalities. So for now, this will be um, quadratics, cube functions like x squared or x cubed. Um, we might have rational like 1 over x minus 1, things like that. Um, we're going to use a new technique called sign charts. We are not going to use all of our algebra rules for equations, um, and that has to do with the fact if we have like, uh, let's do negative 2x is greater than 2. When we divide by negative 2, the sign flips, um, and so that causes some issues with variables. So to avoid those issues, we're going to um, do these sign charts instead. So. This first step is we're going to use properties of inequalities to move everything to one side and the number zero on the other side. So we'll always have the number zero. And the reason that we use zero is that's our cutoff for positive or negative. Right, if things are greater than zero, they're positive. Less than zero, they're negative. But if I put any other number there, that's no longer useful. Um, if we have the option to factor, we'll factor. And then we'll find the zeros of each factor and mark them on the number line. And we'll do all of this in example one. And then we'll determine the sign of each interval. So to solve example one, x squared plus 5x greater than or equal to 6, is step one is we need to move everything so that we get the number zero. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6, and that'll give me a zero on the right side. So I get x squared plus 5x minus 6 is greater than or equal to zero. So now that we have a zero, we'll keep going. We always want a zero because that's, um, our, again, our cutoff for positive negative. And when we do the sign charts, we'll see why that's important. So we're going to go ahead and factor. Um, we want a product of negative 6 and a sum of 5. Pretty soon I won't do the step of factoring. Um, so I think um, negative 6, what could we get? We could get... 6 and negative 1. So plus 6 minus 1. Um, 6 minus 1 gives me 5. 6 times negative 1 gives me negative 6. And then greater than or equal to 0. So that's step 2. Um, and then we're going to find the zeros. So the zeros are x plus 6 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. We'll worry about the inequality in a second. So we're not doing an inequality right now, we're just finding the zeros. So we get x equals negative 6 and x equals 1, and we'll mark them on the number line. So negative 6 and 1. And this creates intervals. So to review that interval notation again, um, this first interval would be negative infinity to negative 6. The second interval would be negative 6 to 1. I'm not going to include the endpoints, we just don't know yet. And the last interval would be 1 to infinity. So the ends are negative infinity on the left, positive infinity on the right. So we have three intervals. And now the final step is probably very new to us. We're going to determine the sign of each interval. And the sign is going to tell us when this statement, x squared plus 5x minus 6, is positive and when it's negative. And since we're doing greater than or equal to 0, that means we want the positive intervals. So I like to make a table. Um, I like to plug into each factor and then combine them. So my factors were x plus 6, x minus 1, and then the entire statement. And we're going to find out, are we getting positive or negative numbers? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a number on each interval and test it. So my first interval is negative 6 is negative infinity to negative 6, so I can pick any number on this interval. I'll probably pick negative 7. We call this a test value. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. So we're going to plug it into each piece. So negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1, so that interval is negative. You could do negative 8, right? Negative 8 plus 6 is also negative. The number itself is not really relevant, just the sign. Um, how about we'll plug into this next one. Negative 7 minus 1 would be negative. It's negative 8, but all I care is that it's negative. I care about the sign. And a negative times a negative is a positive. 
So this entire interval is positive. Um, let's pick the next interval. So the next interval is negative 6 to 1. So I pick something in between. So I could pick negative 5. I could pick negative 4. Um, I really like 0 because 0 is really easy. So you can pick any number and you'll get the same results. And we'll plug in. So 0 plus 6 is positive 6. So we'll just write a positive. 0 minus 1. We'll just subtract. And we get negative 1 or negative and you multiply a positive and negative, and the whole thing would be negative on this interval. And then our final interval is one to infinity. So pick a number on the interval, not the endpoints. So don't pick one, but maybe pick two, or three or four, I like two. So two plus six is eight, or positive eight. Two minus one is positive, so this interval is positive. And remember, we wanted those positive intervals. Cool, so we're going to shade the curve and then we'll write the answer in interval notation. So the first interval and the last interval are my solutions, so we'll shade those. And then since we have the or equal sign, I'm gonna do closed circles and include the endpoints. Included endpoints. And then if we want to write the solution, we'll just say our interval is negative infinity to negative 6. We have that little bracket on negative 6 because it's included. We'll do a big U for union. It tells us either interval. And then we'll do bracket 1 to infinity because those are by intervals that are positive. Um, so let's try one more. So we can do it for rational as well. Um, we cannot multiply both sides by the denominator. Um, so x squared plus x minus 12 over x plus 2 less than 0. We can't multiply by x plus 2 because we don't know if it's positive or negative. It's tempting. If it were an equation, we might do that. Um, but don't do that. And that's because if it's positive, it stays less than, right? But if it's negative, it flips to a greater than. That's the issue with inequalities. So instead, we're going to factor and find the signs. Um, so the bottom's already factored, so we'll go ahead and factor the top. So x squared minus x, or plus x minus 12. Um, so factor, if you remember, um, I'm going to say that it's positive 4 and negative 3. So 4 times negative 3 gives me a product of negative 12 and a sum of 1. And then denominator is fine as is, x plus 2 less than 0. So let's go ahead and find our zeros and we'll do the test intervals again. So we have three zeros because we have three factors. So we have negative 4 from x plus 4. We have 3 from x plus 3. And we have negative 2 from x plus 2. So we have more intervals this time. These are called zeros, right? You just set each piece equal to 0 and solve. So we have four intervals this time. Our first one is negative infinity to negative 4, then we have negative 4 to negative 2, negative 2 to 3, and 3 to infinity. So we're going to have to test four times. And then in this example, since we're doing a less than, that means we want the negative intervals. So I like to set up a table. Um, I'm going to do all three factors, and then I'll do the final product. So x plus 4. I think it's easier to test one piece at a time. That's why I do this. And then we'll combine them into all of them. So technically, you could test them all at once, but it gets really overwhelming. So I find it easier to test one at a time. So we should have four columns, one column for each interval. All right, and we 
negative three factors. And we'll just test in each interval. So we can pick any number for the first one between negative infinity and negative four. So I'm gonna pick negative five. I try not to pick too big or too small of numbers because it gets confusing. For negative four to negative two, I'll probably test uh, negative three. Um, negative two to three, we have a lot of choices. Negative one, zero, one, two. I like zero. You could also pick like one half, but why would we do that? That's hard. And then for three to infinity, anything, maybe I'll pick four. So these are called my test values. These aren't interval values or endpoints, these are just test values. So I like to do it in a different color. So go ahead and test. If you feel like you're catching on, go for it. Otherwise, do it with me. And again, we only care about the sign, not the number. So let's start with negative five. So we'll do negative five plus four. That gives me a negative for negative one. I don't care about the number. Negative five minus three, I'm just plugging in for x, is a negative eight, so negative. And then negative five plus two is also negative. And then three negatives is a negative, right? Two of them cancel out. And then we have one left over, basically. Let's keep going. So plug in negative three for x. Um, you can always use a calculator, um, but we want to get efficient at this, so we want to practice doing it in our head. Even if it's harder in the beginning, in the long run, it'll be a good strategy. You'll do this in calculus as well. So negative 3 plus 4 is positive. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative. It happens to be negative 6, but again, we just care that it's negative. And then negative 3 plus 2 is negative. So these two negatives cancel out, and so this interval is positive. Zero, zero is my favorite because it's fast. So zero plus four is positive, zero minus three is negative, and zero plus two is positive. So zero is always my favorite. If you can plug in zero for an interval, I always pick that one. And this interval will be negative. And then go ahead and try four. Four plus four is positive for 8, 4 minus 3 is a positive 1, and then 4 plus 2 is 6. So again, we're just plugging the test values in for x. And then all three positive will give me a positive interval. So that's the sign charts. And so let's go ahead and decide what intervals we want. We wanted negative, so we want the last one and the third one. Uh, are endpoints included? No, because there's no or equal. Endpoints not included. And that's because of the less than, not the less than or equal. So we're going to go ahead and shade from negative infinity to negative 4. Open circles because we're not including. And then we'll jump to the third interval, negative 2 to 3. So my solution would be negative infinity to negative 4. And then the union symbol is basically saying or in the interval negative 2 to 3. So all of these intervals represent the solution set. So any number within these intervals would be a solution to this messy inequality.